Secretary General de Jens, I would like to welcome you again most warmly to Berlin. One of our many opportunities that we have to share our views on defense policy and security in Europe. I was just informing the Secretary General that we had 57 OSCE representatives that we met with and discussed this topic field also because of a changed security situation that we both described in different places. The security situation has changed, and in the institutions in which we work, we have to respond to this, you as Secretary General of NATO, and we at the moment as the country holding the chairmanship of OSCE. When it comes to NATO, Jens, I would like to expressly thank you for your management, for the good way in which you handled things in the run-up to the certainly not easy NATO summit in Warsaw. We discussed this a couple of times. I know that it was not easy to find a consensus, especially when it came to the preparation or preparedness of NATO to be more present in the eastern territories of NATO. So at the end, and this is not only my assessment of the NATO summit, we found a reasonable balance between the two major pillars of the NATO philosophy, which is deterrence on the one hand and offers of dialogue on the other. In Germany, we are very grateful for you being part of those people that remind us that despite all the dangers and risks that we see and nobody underestimates them, the dialogue aspect should never be forgotten. And I am very grateful that thanks to your help, at least at the ambassador's level, the NATO-Russia Council has been relaunched again. So we discussed this not for the first time today, that whenever we offer dialogue between deterrence and dialogue, there's always one difference. Deterrence is very concrete. We took the decisions on this also on a stronger presence. Dialogue is something that we also have to underpin with similarly concrete offers. And this is an objective pursued by a proposal that I made in public last week. This is following the inspiration of uh, where are the fields uh, where NATO or OSCE can come into a dialogue with Russia. There is one concern that I share. For many years, basically, we have uh, not uh, continued our dialogue on arms control. At least this is nothing that we actively underpin. And I believe that this seems to be a domain where at least we should attempt to test the Russian side in order to find out whether they have the willingness to discuss aspects of joint security with us in order to make sure that we do not end up falling back into old confrontation lines. Over and above that, the actual reason for the changed security situation after the annexation of Crimea, the Ukraine conflict, this needs to be resolved, and that's out of the question. And dear Jens, I can assure you that we are investing a lot of time, but also ambition and commitment in order to find ways to seek a solution. The floor is yours. Frank Walter, and thank you for once again hosting me here in Berlin. I have visited Berlin several times as a Secretary General, and every time I appreciate the meetings with you. We are close friends. We have been working together for uh, many years, and I also appreciate very much your strong uh, commitment uh, to uh, the efforts of the NATO alliance to pursue the dual track uh, of both a strong deterrence defense and a dialogue at the same time. And I absolutely agree with you that the Warsaw Summit was a very strong expression of the unity in the alliance, uh, supporting this dual-track approach, 
with deterrence and defense. And Germany, uh, which is uh, at the heart of Europe and at the heart of uh, uh, the NATO alliance, is uh, a key ally, and I appreciate so much our close uh, cooperation. Uh, you are making uh, significant contributions to different NATO operations, uh, from Afghanistan to Kosovo to the Aegean Sea. You are playing, playing a role uh, in enhancing defense of our allies in the East, uh, Germany being a lead nation for one of the battalions we are going to deploy in the eastern part of the alliance. Uh, and uh, I, uh, in particular, appreciate your strong personal commitment uh, to the work and the efforts to find a peaceful negotiated solution to the conflict in uh, Ukraine. This is important for Ukraine, but it is of course also important for the whole of uh, Europe and for our uh, common uh, security. Uh, and uh, uh, at the time when the world has become more dangerous, Germany is stepping up to help maintain a peaceful order in Europe, and that is something I appreciate very much. We have just discussed uh, our relations with Russia and Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea and its continued support for separatists in eastern Ukraine have shaken uh, the peaceful order in Europe. At the same time, we cannot simply shut the door on Russia. Russia is our biggest neighbor and will be integral to future European security. NATO will continue to balance strong defense uh, with meaningful dialogue. This is in our own interest. Talking to Russia allows us to clearly communicate our positions and avoid uh, the potential for accidents and misunderstandings. I'm grateful uh, to Minister Steinmeier for uh, supporting this dual track approach of, of pursuing strong defense and dialogue together. Frank Walter, I welcome uh, your recent proposal to engage Russia uh, in renewed talks on conventional arms control in Europe. It is a timely initiative and it provides valuable ideas for allies to consider. We need to update the rulebook of European security. We need more military transparency to prevent incidents and accidents spiraling out of control. Allies uh, are also working to update the OSCE's uh, Vienna document on military transparency. As current chair uh, of the OSCE, Germany is driving that process and you personally, uh, uh, you are playing a lead role in uh, 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 enhancing the agenda of transparency and risk reduction in uh, Europe. NATO can play an important role in reducing risk and promoting increased transparency. So, Frank Walter, uh, I look forward to continuing our work, uh, to continue to work with you to address all these important issues. Thank you. Thanks. Christoph Sater from, the Christoph Sater from DPA. Mr. Stoltenberg, Mr. Steinmeier, last week was uh, in suggesting new arms control talks and on the fringes of the OSCE, the conference yesterday in Potsdam, there has been criticism that was raised that it would be proposed too early because Russia is not yet adhering to the existing treaties. So what do you think of the proposal and of the criticism voiced by the United States? Mr. Steinmeier, my question to you. Spiegel is reporting today that the federal government wants to distance itself from the resolution on Armenia by the Bundestag. Is this truly the case? And what are the political and legal implications? How is the binding character of this resolution? I welcome the initiative and the proposals of uh, Minister Steinmeier. Uh, I welcome it because we need to avoid a new arms race. We need to avoid a new Cold War. And therefore, we need to also look into how we can uh, make progress on the arms control agenda. Of course, there are many obstacles, there are many problems, there are many unsolved issues, but uh, uh, the initiative from uh, Frank-Walter Steinmeier, the Minister Frank-Walter Steinmeier, is about starting a process where we can look into different uh, proposals, and he put forward some, of, some proposals in his article, uh, his op-ed, and then uh, it is for NATO allies to consider and to discuss how we uh, can uh, uh, move on and how we can uh, relate to the different uh, proposals. 
There is no contradiction between both focusing on how we can uh, implement and make sure that existing agreements are respected and at the same time looking into how we can modernize and improve uh, those uh, uh, agreements. For instance, we have the Vienna document on transparency and risk reduction. And uh, uh, we have to look into both how we can make sure that the existing agreements are respected and at the same time how we can modernize that document uh, so we take into account uh, uh, new facts uh, and new realities. For instance, we have much more use of SNAP exercises and that is a loophole in the existing uh, uh, Vienna document. So we should consider how we can do something with those loopholes, for instance, introducing uh, SNAP inspections, SNAP ob observations of SNAP exercises. So there's no, no contradiction between uh, urging uh, the respect of existing agreements and at the same time looking into how we can modernize and update them. When it comes to the relations with Turkey, I have to, of course, explain that at the moment there are many fields of friction, not only since the attempted coup took place and the aftermath of this that is currently taking place in Turkey. There was some friction before as well, and some new fields have opened up. It is, of course, the task of foreign policy to reduce the fields of friction wherever they exist and to try and find possibilities of maintaining relations with Turkey and this with a perspective for the future. In our most recent talks, we had the impression that this is also something Turkey is interested in. The fields we are currently discussing with Turkey are manifold. We are also discussing the arrestations that took place in the past amongst soldiers, teachers, researchers, and we discussed that we expect the legal proceedings to be carried out on the basis of the rule of law. I am very grateful that the President of the Council of Europe has very much dedicated some time to this, and the President of the European Parliament also did this yesterday. So we are discussing with Turkey the respect of the agreement on refugees, as well as many other issues and amongst them the resolution of the German Bundestag and its binding character. So the German Bundestag has voiced an opinion on this itself many times. Firstly, the, Deutsch, the German Bundestag has the right and the freedom to express itself on political issues. But the Bundestag also states itself that not every resolution has a binding, legally binding character. Andreas Rinke von Reuters, ich hätte eine Frage an beide, <coughs> vor allem Herr Steinmeier. Andreas Rinke from Reuters, and I have a question to both, especially to Mr. Steinmeier. From Eastern Europe, there is the demand for a European army, especially after Hungary and the Czech Republic were not very open to this proposal that you also made. And do you think that because of the Brexit referendum, there is now a genuine opportunity for us in the EU to have joint armed forces? And what would be the first steps? Secretary General, do you think that this is a contradiction to the objectives of NATO? If I may briefly comment on this, you pointed this out already. For the SPD, this is not an entirely new idea. In the past, we have made this part and parcel of our own declarations. Yes. As a matter of fact, there is new momentum that is added to the debate, not only from Eastern Europe and not always under the headline of a European army. But if you read the paper of the Italian foreign minister from the um, second last week on the renewal of Europe, we can find many things in that paper that I've also wrote down together with our French colleague Jean-Marc Ayrault when it comes to the renewal of the European Union in the field of migration and displacement as well as security. And there is also a special 
focus in this paper of Janti Yoni on uh, an enhanced European cooperation on defence matters. Yes, therefore, we have clearly seen an increased and growing interest amongst the member states of the European Union, not always in a European army, but yes, an enhanced European cooperation. NATO and the European Union are faced with the same security challenges and we share uh, uh, territory and uh, we also share member states. Uh, more than 90% of the population in the European Union live in a NATO country. So I believe that uh, uh, to strengthen uh, the defence capabilities and capacities of uh, European uh, allies it's good for the European Union, it's good for uh, NATO at the same time. And I'm strongly pushing for strengthening uh, cooperation uh, between European uh, allies. I welcome uh, also uh, the uh, strengthening cooperation between uh, NATO and the European Union. We agreed on that in Warsaw where President Tusk, President Juncker and I signed the joint declaration underlining and outlining how we can enhance the cooperation between NATO and the European Union. And I also welcome uh, uh, closer cooperation uh, inside the European Union uh, among different uh, uh, EU members uh, on defence and security issues. The thing we have to avoid is duplication. So we have to complement each other. And uh, for me, uh, it is uh, uh, important that we uh, uh, cooperate more closely but that we avoid duplication of the efforts of the European Union and NATO. Uh, and I'm sure, certain that we will be able to find ways to do that uh, in a way that benefits both Europe, NATO, the European Union and NATO at the same time.